Hello Laravel friends, today we're diving into exciting new features of Laravel 12.25. We've got a lying stray request, a handy markdown button on arrows, and some fresh new merge methods for you. Let's go! First, you can now better handle stray requests that you want to allow. I do have this test in my application where I want to make sure that I can import users. And I'm doing this by first checking if the user table is empty here. Then I'm making a call to this handle method of this action, which imports the users. And then I'm just checking if I have 10 users in my database. And if I run this, you can see this is working. But now I want to make sure that no requests are going out during this test. And I can do this with the prevent straight request method. So if you're using the HTTP client in order to make a request, then you can also run this method and it will tell you if there are some requests going out that you probably not know of. And if I run this now, you can see that this will fail because we are making one request inside our action here. And into this action here, we're making here this get request to this dummy JSON endpoint, which gives us some uses. So this means, yeah, we're using an HTTP request in order to import the users. So there are a few ways we can go around this. If we're sure we still want to make use of this method and make sure that there are no side effects, no other requests are going out, I can just fake this one call which we have inside our action by saying I want to allow all calls to this endpoint to the dummy API. And I have a method here to give me already 10 users as an array and if we run this, this will now pass again and it does. All right, so what this does now, it just says here again, we don't want any requests going out, but we say if this happens, we want to get this response back. And the benefit here now is that our tests are of course way faster. We don't need to really talk to an endpoint. We can just fake it. But there are also circumstances where you still want to make this request, but Maybe that's the only one that you want to allow. And we can do this now with the new allow stray request method. But actually it's not new. We already had this before. You could already use it like this. But this way, of course, it would not work in the way that we intended to work because now it just allows stray request because now it would just allow stray request, which we only want to do for this one endpoint which we have. So the new thing here is now that we can provide an array of the things that we want to allow. So let's see, this is now passing as well. But the difference is now if we have any other request, they will still fail, fail and our test will tell us about it because this is the only request going to this endpoint that we allow. And this is now possible through the new argument that we can provide to the allow stray request method. Thank you, Richard. We also added some new merge methods when dealing with hidden eloquent fields or casts. In every level model, you can define a few things for attribute. You can set what should be fillable, what should be hidden by default when you output it, what are the casts for this attribute, and so on. And the way that this works, you can define it easily here as a property or as a method. But if you want to define this on the fly, this gets a little bit more tricky. Let me show you. So I have here user, and if we output the array presentation of this user, you can see we get a few fields, but you can also see some fields are missing, like password or the remember token. And we have a method to show us all the hidden fields. And yes, you can see password and remember token are two hidden fields, which normally get not outputted just by the two array method, because yeah, in most cases, we don't want to have this. So this means now if you want to add something to this array, we can go to the user class, of course. But if you want to do this on the run, this gets a little bit more tricky. So what we have to do, we have to use the set hidden method. And if I just provide you, for example, the name, and then let's output the user again as an array. And what you can see now is that currently only the name field is hidden. The name field is not inside here anymore, but we have password and remember token in here. So this means this completely overrides the hidden fields. So this means in order to make this work as we wanted it to work, we would need to merge our value with what we get back from the user when we run get hidden, which is not an array. So we're merging those two arrays. And now you can see, yes, so we don't have password and remember token anymore, and we also don't have the name field anymore inside here. So yeah, you can see this is working. 
But yeah, this is a little bit tricky to do and there are some nicer ways to do this for casts already. So for example, for casts, there is already a method called merge casts where I can just provide an array and I'm saying that maybe I want to add to my cast that the name should be a stringable class like this. And if we then output our user and maybe get this right first, yeah, you can see that name is now of the instance stringable. So this means we already had a nice way to do this with cast. And we now also have a nice way to do this for some new things like hidden. So we now also have a merge hidden one. So this means we can just get rid of this array merge. We don't need to grab this anymore. We just provide what we want to add. And if we run this, you can see the name is not inside here anymore. And this looks now way cleaner than before. Inside the pull request description, you get all information about what has changed. So these were the methods which we had before, merge cast, merge fillable, and merge guarded. And now we also have merge visible, merge hidden, and merge appends. So check them out and have fun. Thank you, John. And last, let's talk about the markdown buttons on our arrow pages. That's one real game changer for debugging with AIs. For this last feature I want to show you today, I need to make this fail and we need to show here an exception. And I'm going to do this by just using here another underscore which will fail. Let's run this and you can see this is failing and we have this beautiful arrow page layout which still amazes me till this day. This is so cool. But yeah, now we have something new. We have this copy as markdown button. And you have seen this probably a lot now on the internet. We have this now on the level documentation as well. And we now also have this on our arrow page. So let's click this. It's now copied. And I'm creating here a new scratch file, markdown file in PHP Storm here. And I'm just pasting everything in here. Okay. So what do we have here? We have here a summary of the exception. We have the error here. We have PHP version, level version. We have the UL. We have the stack trace, which of course, we have the adders. We have information about the request. We have route parameters, database queries. So yeah, everything that your AI could or would need is now in here. And you can just copy it and paste it in your AI of choice. And yeah, they have now a good understanding of what's going on and they're very good at working with markdown files. So yeah, that's the perfect choice for them. Of course, if you're already using Laravel Boost, our assistant for working with your coding AI agent of choice, Boost can do this itself already, but yeah, it's still good to have it there. Copy just the markdown version of your error and paste it in where you need it. Thank you, Marcel. A massive thank you to all the amazing contributors for these new features and for making Lava even more incredible. If you enjoyed today's rundown, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe for more Lava fun. Thanks for watching and see you the next time. Bye.